Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary friends. Welcome to Multicultural TV Talk, a Media Village podcast where we bring you interviews with talent and creatives from across entertainment, discovering their stories and how they're changing the face of stardom across media. As always, I am your host, Juan Ayala. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, let's get to talking. So today's guest is an actress you've seen in The Revenant, How It Ends, and currently starring in ABC's latest drama, Alaska Daily. Please welcome Grace Dove. Grace, thank you so much for being here. Welcome. Uh, thank you for having me, Juan. Um, so I want to go back to your uh, audition for the role. So I'm sure there are lots of self tapes involved and zoom sessions and things like that, given the uh, still pandemic era that we're in. So what was that whole experience like for you uh, compared to some of your past uh, bookings? Yeah, we auditioned uh, during still the pandemic and that changed everything. You know, I was living in LA for a number of years doing the the grind, going from studio to studio, three to four auditions a day, driving all around LA and then I ended up back in Vancouver, which is where I've been based out of for the last decade. And I came back, what I call home, the Musqueam, Squamish, and Slowtooth Nation uh, that I am a guest on, and uh, started auditioning over Zoom. And I got this incredible audition. And before I even looked at who's heading it, I didn't look at the names, I just looked at the, the sides. And I knew immediately that this was my dream role. Um, I was up for a number of auditions last year, a number of lead roles. And when they went away, it was heartbreaking. But then in hindsight, booking Roz on Alaska Daily was truly um, such a dream. With, again, with the show highlighting so many underrepresented issues in the Indigenous community, uh, I mean, just in the pilot, I remember they addressed the quintuple suicide rates in a lot of um, reservations and villages and um, of course the the missing and murdered indigenous women and, and people uh, cases that are just running rampant still I feel like I've been hearing about these issues for over 10 years and it's always online it's never on mainstream media which is particularly heartbreaking so um, what can you speak about being part of this uh, raising of awareness and and also the representation that the show has I grew up along the Highway of Tears, Highway 16 in uh, Northern British Columbia. And this has been something that's very prevalent and a part of, uh, sadly, my life, my family and my community. And, um, you know, it's not just one area. It's not just, Mm -hmm. for example, Alaska. It's not just Northern British Columbia. This is across North America um, and across indigenous territories. So we've been, unfortunately, living this our whole lives. So for me, it's not shocking. It's not new. It's nothing that I haven't heard of. But to be able to showcase it on a network television show, to showcase on on ABC, and to be in living rooms, you know, to be on TVs of a lot of people that have never heard of this, it it means, it matters. Mm -hmm. It matters that... um, non-Indigenous folks will now have an opportunity to hopefully educate themselves and to show compassion. In addition to that, what are you hoping that audiences take away from the series? Because it does address, as you said, so many different um, issues. There's so many things with the show. I know Tom McCarthy, our our, uh, creator of the show, he's so passionate about journalism. So I want our audiences to care about local journalism because it's only the local journalism that is going to share and bring light to what's happening within the communities. Um, And aside of being a journalist, I also want to showcase and to share the struggle and the fight that we have as Indigenous peoples that is ongoing. Uh, You know, we've been fighting colonization for 500 years. And so... I really hope that audiences can take it upon themselves to be curious and to start educating themselves on the true history of the territory that they now live on. And with this big wave of uh, increased in positive indigenous representation with shows like Res Dogs, movies like Prey, like just completely blowing up the internet, um, what are you hoping to see more of? in regards to that representation? And at the same time, what are you hoping to see less of? I think it's really positive. I mean, I've been in, I've been in this industry for a decade and uh, the growth I've seen is very positive. Mm-hmm. So I want to see 
more of us in the writing room. And that's what Alaska Daily is doing. We have two Alaska Native writers in our room, creating the story, creating the characters, making sure everything is authentic. Mm -hmm. That's the first step. What I'd like to see more of is uh, Indigenous crew, because I think that a lot of us aren't necessarily in those positions yet, because we're still struggling with a, a lot of uh, day-to-day, you know, trauma. So I'd like to see us trained. I'd like to see more Indigenous crew. And I'd like to see more Indigenous directors, um, actors. I'd just like to see more of us, you know, take up space, take up the space that we've always um, deserved. Uh, but this is definitely such a good start. I mean, I know that I'm not the first one talking about this. There are generations before me. I'm not, you know, I'm not the first one, right? Mm-hmm. There have been, there's uh, Irene Bedard, there's uh, Tantu Cardinal, uh, uh, Andrea Menard. There's, there's many, many actors, Adam Beach. Uh, you know, there's many, many leaders mm-hmm. before me who have been doing this. They would laugh if they hear that I doing the same struggle right because they've been doing this for way longer so we have so many uh warriors and this is just another step up and we just have to keep taking those steps so we're about five episodes into the run so far um about halfway through the season if i if i remember correctly it's an episode order Mm -hmm. yeah um so what are you um looking forward to for audiences to learn um, about your character and to see for the series overall I think it's a beautiful hero's journey of a young buck who maybe feels like she knows everything, knows a lot, and she does. Roz definitely knows a lot when it comes to her territory and her people. But as Grace, I see where she has to go. It's it's this beautiful mix of living in two worlds and i think a lot of indigenous people feel that uh you know when it comes to journalism when it comes to um academics when it comes to working with non-indigenous people and how do we take advantage how do we jump on that but also keep our grounding um as as the peoples of the land i think when it comes to Roz she is doing all of it. She's encompassing it. And I really want to see Roz step out. I mean, maybe it's too early in the season one, but I want to see her step out and go, I've arrived. I'm here. Thank you, Eileen. You, you have taught me as much as she is stubborn as I am. uh, And I feel it. I feel the fight. You know, I don't want to necessarily thank her, hug her, but, but there is that, right. It's, it's, Mm -hmm. Uh, it's as it's it's two people who really want the same thing, and that's the truth. Mm. So I, I'd love to see Roz step into her full power and become just the biggest journalist uh, in Alaska. <laughs> um, and with the increase of um, several Indigenous issues, as we said, uh, like things like suicide, missing person cases, assaults, um, what? can you suggest for our listeners, for our viewers, what can they do to learn more and to help in these causes? That's, that's a hard question. Um, the biggest thing that I've struggled with is always feeling like it's on us to educate people. Mm-hmm. For Indigenous peoples to, to recommend resources when I think resources are very much out there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there's books around, uh, you know, the Indian Act. Simple. It's, it's learning about how were Indigenous peoples oppressed since contact. Um, but more importantly, I think that whatever territory you're on, I think the best thing you can do to honor those, those peoples is to look up their history, to look up what their traditions are. How can you support them? So if you're maybe based in LA, that's that's Tongva territory. And uh, you know, who are the Tongva people? What were their traditions, mm-hmm. right? So for me, as, as an indigenous Sekwapmk woman, it's hard because I'm such, I'm, I'm a 
I'm a nation in what's now called British Columbia in Canada, and we are so unique to our territories. So you go all the way over to down to LA, you go over to, you know, six nations, you go up to Alaska. Every nation is so specific to what they are fighting, whether it's the pipelines, right? Whether it is, you know, what, whatever that they are dealing with in, in today. So it's hard to necessarily say what the fight is. The fight is just to preserve and to listen and to um, to research whose land you're on, because I, I mean, most people I don't think can even name whose land they're on. Mm. So if you can't even do that, then you haven't even started. And all it takes is, I think, the internet, rather than going and asking your native friends, uh, right. you know, teach me about native people, right? I'm mm. sure that's that's similar across BIPOC uh, mm. experiences. I, uh, in watching these types of series and, and just speaking with so many actors from the indigenous community, um, as someone who comes from indigenous Latino community, it, there's so much intersectionality and so much relatability mm. across groups. Um, and, you know, dealing with like, uh, the Spanish, uh, colonization and the mm -hmm. European colonization of, of the, of North America and all of that. I just relate so much to all of these stories is why they, they grab my attention so much. I feel like I mm. have so much to learn still, but I'm like so ready mm. and willing to learn. Yep. Um, so, you know, again, congrats on such a, on a great show and, and on being able to raise awareness on these issues. Um, but before we go, we always do, um, of course, talk about, uh, representation. So can you recall what was like the first performance or the first time you saw a performance that made you feel represented for the first time? Mm. And this is so, um, it seems almost made up, but it's too classic. But my first film that I ever loved on VHS was Smoke Signal. And I grew up without TV, uh, without like, cable, nothing like that. I was too busy out riding bikes. And um, I remember watching Smoke Signals and Irene Bedard was one of the main actresses on that film. And I remember seeing how beautiful she was and incredibly soft and smart and kind. And I just thought, oh my gosh, I was so in love with her. And, and that's who I work alongside in Alaska Daily. She plays uh, Sylvie and I have many scenes with her. And if you ever asked child Grace if she would ever be working with Irene Bedard, I, I would have, uh, you know, not, not, I wouldn't believe it. Mm. Um, and she's an Alaska native. And so it's, I really believe that I have a purpose and that this is all kind of coming around. and. Irene is just such a, a beautiful performer and I, I'm learning from her every day. So it's bizarre because that film is actually like one of our, as Native peoples, our go-to classic, you know, Hey Victor. And, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, it's, it's so iconic that we laugh and we all joke about it, but it's also very powerful as a filmmaker. When I look back at it and what we did in that time, it's so powerful, mm -hmm. even though it's, it may be, I don't know how people react these days, but for us, I show everyone I meet, if they haven't watched it, I sit them down and I show them smoke signals. <laughs> and for uh, any young actors uh, who are out there who are looking for some uh, words of wisdom or advice, what, what do you have to share with them? The words that were given to me as a young actor were, if there's anything else you wanna do, go do it. And like, that's it, mic drop. If there's anything else that you feel drawn to, you pursue that because I think the greatest dreams take so much commitment. And I have tried to quit. You ask my friends, I've tried to quit many, many times along the way. I look into universities, I look into other jobs and there's nothing else for me. I know that this is my life's purpose. And as an actor, if you want to tell stories that are hard, that are funny, that have meaning, that don't have meaning, if you want to be a stand-up, whatever it is, you need to follow that because I always thought, uh, I don't ever want to look back and think I didn't try. So 
it's finding that it's finding that purpose and knowing that there is support for you. You know, I have a lot, a lot of young actors that I mentor and that I support over text over, you know, read auditions with them. And I, I am here and I know a lot of, uh, a lot of us are for our young up and coming youth. So if you're on your res and you don't think it's possible leave, it is, if you want to, you can always go back. But for young people, um, just know that like there is such a future for us. Grace, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. If any of our listeners or viewers want to give you a follow on social media, anywhere, where can they find you? Yeah, if anyone wants to follow me, I'm under Grace Dove on uh, mainly Instagram. I love because you'll see videos of my dogs and then uh, Facebook and a little bit of Twitter. Awesome. And folks, you know, you can follow us at Media Village. Come on Instagram, head over to MediaVillage.com for all of our reviews, interviews, podcasts, and more. And of course, don't miss Grace Dove on Alaska Daily, Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern on ABC. I'm Juan Ayala. This is Multicultural TV Talk. Thanks for joining us.